morning, Marquise. How you doing? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. Thanks. Uh, what do you feel like the strong areas of your game have been this season? Um, the strongest areas of my game this season is, you know, definitely on the defensive side. Um, that's been like uh, one of the main strong things that I think I've developed over the course of the year. Um, and my playmaking ability has been like my second strong suit. But, you know, I feel like I'm playing a whole different game. I'm, I, I'm playing, you know, a more controlled game. I'm playing, you know, more the quarterback um, um, that, you know, K-State needs. What kind of adjustments have you made from the way you played at Arkansas Little Rock? Um, you know, just adjustment off the ball, playing off the ball, and, you know, uh, getting other guys involved. Um, back in Little Rock, um, I was I was a man. I was a show. Um, I, was, I was capable of taking, you know, pretty much any shot I want, and they were going in at an efficient rate because, you know, that freedom that I had. Um, but my role on K-State is different. Um, this year is different. Um, we have a lot of new guys. We have a, a ton of more talent. So I think that's where my game has, you know, adjusted and, and, and has been evolving. It appears your three-point shooting percentage is lower than what it's been in your previous seasons. Can you, <clears throat> excuse me, identify what um, one thing that's been your biggest struggle in that area? Um, I've been trying to figure that out um, over the course of the year. Uh, it's, it's definitely my, my lowest or the lowest um, in, in terms of shooting the ball, but you know, when you're giving your all on defense, when you're doing so many other things, um, you know, uh, uh, other other aspects or other attributes could, you know, take a decline or take a back seat to that. But, you know, I'm staying confident in my jump shot. I put in a ton of work. Um, I've been putting in, you know, more work than I've ever been putting in because of how low I've been shooting the ball. Um, so I just say the biggest thing that I think um, – is the reason for, you know, shooting the ball so low is probably my, um, I'm giving my all on defense. And what's the biggest area that the team needs to shore up for us as team-wide? Um, I feel like we need all, all, every single guy on this roster, you know, to step up in a big way, even if that's give, giving you all for, you know, three minutes or 11 minutes. Um, Everybody has to step up. Everybody has to, you know, contribute to to us winning because this league is tough. You know, we got Baylor, you got Texas Tech, you got you got all these guys who um who are more experienced and who's who's been playing together. But you know, they they are all contributing in a big way. So if we could get guys like myself shooting the ball, Ishmael, Casey, you know, contributing, D. Brad, I think we would be uh, very good in the end. Thank you, Marquise. Uh, next question to Kellis. Yeah, Marquise, good to see you. Um, thinking back to the last game, when, when you picked up that fourth foul right after you initially got the third, how much do you wish you had that play back? I definitely wish I got that play back because I know how, how important my team needs me and how you know, big of an impact I have on the game. Um, I should have noticed that the you know the refs were 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 calling uh calling it lightly on us and that you know we couldn't be as physical as we wanted to be but you know that's just that's just me um I have to mature I have to realize you know time and situation and you know how how important I am to my team and when I picked up the fourth one you know I kind of knew that you know the game was pretty much you know like not in our favor because I wasn't really out there but. You know, um, we have the Big 12 tournament. We have multiple games ahead of us. We're just trying to stay level-headed and keep maturing and keep elevating. How delicate is that balance for a player like you who obviously likes to play aggressive, likes to push the needle, um, to play that way and still avoid foul trouble? It's, it's very hard, um, you know, because that's, that's how I play. I play aggressive. I play with energy. You know, the Big 12 is, is known for being physical, so um, – when you play like that for three to four games and then on that fifth day, fifth game, um, they call, you know, a hand check or something. 
it just throws off your momentum. It throws off, you know, the um, your intensity because you have to be aware of, you know, foul trouble and how the refs are calling it. So, you know, it, it's just, it just, I have to do my part with with knowing um, how the refs are calling it and, you know, just be smarter, um, be a better leader. And you could go a lot of ways with this one, but I want to see what your opinion is. After playing with Nigel Pack here for you know twenty something games, what impresses you most about him? What does he does? What does he do best? I mean, I think the whole country knows what he does best. But um, he he shoots the ball at a at a, at a great rate, efficient rate. Um, he's a great competitor. Um, he doesn't really talk much, but he's a really really fierce competitor, and he loves to win. So, you know, just having a point guard like that in the backcourt is is great. Um, I know that whenever you know, we're we're in a fight. I could count on him. I could count on my brother. You know, to 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 fight and battle with me. Well, thanks, Marquise. Thank uh, next question to Grant. What's up, Keith? Um, I want to ask you. You know, followed to, uh, Kellis's question. Sorry, uh, the smallest backcourt in the country. Like, how does that make you feel? I know you know you've always had that chip on your shoulder. But to have Nigel, you know, also a shorter guard and to be considered, you know, the and, you know, it's a fact that you're the shortest uh, backcourt in the country and you guys still, you know, produce. How much does that, you know, keep that chip on your shoulder? Um, every day, every game we come out there, you know, we try to give it our all. Um, we know that, you know, uh, we are lacking size, but we, we are not lacking heart. And that's the that's the thing, you know, coach and. You know, uh, a pastor talk about is, you know, leading with your heart and giving it your all. And whenever we go out there, leave it all on the floor. Um, I feel like the game is in our favor because, you know, we have the one of the best shooters in the country. And then you have a leader and somebody who could score off the dribble and, you know, contribute for, you know, his teammates on, on the other side. So I feel like... um uh, the, the chip is going to always be there for us because we know that teams are hunting for us. Teams are, you know, trying to post us up. So we can't we can't give them uh, an easy task of doing that. And the only way we, we, we do that is by giving our all and being aggressive. And then, uh, you know, last few games, you, you won a couple and then lost this last one without Selton Miguel. I mean, what does he do for your team when he is out there, especially on that defensive end? Selton is, 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 is a great, you know, teammate to have, that's for starters. But when he's out there, he give us, you know, a different dynamic on, on, a, on a defensive end because he can really guard your best player. Um, and on an offensive end, he can really he give us, you know, that, that downhill attack aggression that, you know, we need. So when he gets back full and healthy, um, I like our chances going into, you know, the Big 12 tournament. As long as my team continue to keep getting better, keep um, believing, uh, I think we'll be fine. So you have six Big 12 games where you score double figures and three where you haven't. But what do those teams, you know, do to slow you down like Baylor did um, a couple nights ago? Um, no, no discredit to, you know, any of the teams. Every team in the Big 12 is great. You know, the Big 12 is about defense and, you know, strategy and, how you can stop, you know, the, the, the head of the snake. Um, but I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, I stop myself because of how I'm trying to control the game, how I'm trying to get others involved and, you know, it eliminates my aggression. So um, I just say that I'm just, you know, I'm just continuing to keep um, growing and keep seeing, you know, what, what these te different teams um, schemes are for me. And, you know, I watch a ton of films, so I'll, I'm, I'm still adjusting. I'm still adjusting to, you know, the way we play. I'm still adjusting to, you know, the style of our offense. And, you know, one of these days is going to click, and one of these days, you know, uh, we're going to be very good, and we're going to, you know, be one of the top teams. You know, the backcourt's been playing good all season long. Um, and, you know, at least a couple guys in the backcourt each game are balling. But the front court hasn't been pulling their weight as much. I mean, what what is your take on the lack of production from the front court? Um, you know, I believe in my front court. You know, I 
I see them working in practice, you know, I see them putting in the work, but it's it's all on them. It's all about how they believe and how they view themselves and, you know, how much passion they bring each and every day to the game. So if they can just, you know, translate what they're doing and practice to the game, you'll see a total, totally different, you know, front court. And, you know, I just try to give them advice on, you know, just, just staying hungry, staying passionate, you know, let all the outside noise, you know, fuel you. Do something, do whatever it takes to, you know, bring the best out of you. And, you know, um, I feel like they're coming, to, coming around and coming along. And, you know, I'm starting to see that aggression more and more in each and every day. And then last one I got for you, you know, on social media and just talking to you a few times, you know, you seem like a positive person. And, uh, you know, Bruce Weber always talks about how he wants to keep that positivity in the locker room. So um, how much does that help, you know, having a coach that also wants to keep that positive mindset um, for someone like you that likes to, you know, keep moving forward, keep pushing forward and, and, and light, enlightening your teammates instead of, you know, putting them down? It's big time. Um... Like I said before, I was in a I was in a uh, situation at my old school that you know it it was just like a, a totally different different atmosphere. And, you know, whenever you, you stay positive, whenever you keep a, a level head, you know, good things always happen to you. And that's what he consistently speaks about. And he continues to talk about, um, you know, just just battling with your brother, fighting, having that passion, you know, leaving your heart out there. And he tells us like. After the game, the fans should should say, those guys came with some passion. Those guys really left it on the floor. And I think that's what, you know, our guys try to do each and every day. And, you know, yeah, we fall short sometimes. That that could be because of, you know, experience, um, not being able to play with each other for, you know, that much of time for a year. But as long as we play with passion and leave it all out on the floor, you know, we have no complaints from the coaching staff. and inside internally for ourselves you know we feel better thank you marquis uh go ahead wyatt marquis good morning i've got a couple of questions for you one what have you been told by your teammates that have been through this before and going to hilton coliseum it's it's a very difficult place to play what do they tell you about it um they just told me that it's going to be a tough atmosphere, a tough crowd. You know, we play in a very tough team, so you got to bring the A game. You got to come and, you know, attack first. Um, the, the teams that win in the Big 12 is the teams, you know, that attack first and attack for 40 minutes. So um, our focusness and practice today is going to be at an all-time high. And, you know, we're going to just, you know, keep grinding and keep learning. Um, hopefully when we go there, up there, we can get a W. and, and continue to keep building on this momentum. The other question is concerning their point guard, Tyrese Hunter, who's a freshman. You've, I'm sure, watched some film here in the last couple of days. What impresses you about what he's doing numbers-wise? He's a great player. Um, he's a player that, you know, understands the game, um, who has a high motor, who uh, tries to do everything in his power to win. Um, and that's that's pretty much every guard in the Big 12. So, you know, he's a freshman. He's, he's going to continue to keep learning, continue to keep growing. Um, but when we go to Iowa State, you know, it's all about K-State. It's all about the guys, you know, getting a win. Um, and whoever's in front of us, you know, we're going to have to, you know, compete and, and do whatever it takes to win. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, next question to Landon. Hey, Marquise, uh, you've been pretty active on social media, trying to speak into existence, you making it to the next level. And I, I'd kind of like to know where that dream started and how you expect that uh, journey to go. Um, the dream started when I was a little kid, you know, just watching my brother, watching basketball games, you know, on, on TV. I always had a dream of making it to the NBA and making it, you know, being an all-star. Sometimes it keep me up at night, you know, just thinking and dreaming and, and visualizing, you know, myself there. I'm a big guy on manifestation. So, you know, I read books and and do things to, you know, make that come to life. So, yeah, it's just, you know, a dream that, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to speak into existence. 
I'm doing my part with working hard and, you know, the other half is manifestation and believing and, you know, believing in God. Well, that's really cool to hear. Um, the other thing is that you've really accepted the role of the heart over height. It's your pen tweet on Twitter. Uh, and, and you see people bring signs to the game. It's fun. Uh, but when, when did you accept that role that um, I, I'm not a huge guy, but I can play with this passion that people can see and love? I was always short, man, since the beginning, you know. But uh, it started really in high school when, you know, I was probably the shortest guy on my team and on the court at the time, you know, and I just brought the passion and hunger and grit each and every day. And, you know, people used to tell me, man, heart of a height, man, you got some heart, kid. And I was, and I was just laughing, you know. It just, you know, it made me feel good that knowing that you could be the shortest guy on your team, but, you know, at the end of the day, the fans know um, who who gives their heart, who gives, you know, the most passion. You know, that's that's what I try to do out there. I just try to give them my all. And at the end of the day, um, win, lose, or draw, if I give them my all, that's what I can live with. Awesome. Thank you, Marquise. Uh, next question to uh, D. Scott. Hey, Marquise, how you doing today? I'm good, my guy. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, you know, now that now that it's here, just give me a sense for your mindset. What's what's this experience been like going through the grind, the grinding Big Twelve? Um, it's been, you know, it's been a it's been a it's been a long road and you know, it's been a it's been a, a great one, um, because you learn it each and every day. Every day I wake up, you know, I have a purpose. And the purpose is to get better, to, you know, figure out how my team can win and do whatever it takes to win. So, you know, this Big 12 is, is, is really everything everybody, you know, talks about. It's, it's a hard-nosed, tough, competitive league. And, you know, you got to bring your A game and you got to be a professional in this league. And that's what I try to pride myself on. When you talk about A game, your assist game is, is really strong. Can you can you walk me through the art of the assist? How does that happen? Um, film, just you know, knowing where the guy's gonna be at. You know, I have a great feel of the game, so I I'm pretty much you know trying to trying to stay aggressive and get my teammates involved because that's that's what a point guard is supposed to do. The point guard is supposed to you know take ownership of his his mistakes, um, lead the team, play with play with the most heart you know, will his, will his way in to win. So I just feel like the assist just comes from, you know, knowing my teammates, knowing, you know, what spot or how they like the ball. You know, it's just a learning process. That That's not even the strongest part of my game. I don't even think K-State know what I'm capable of doing. But, you know, once I start shooting the ball, you know, at an efficient rate, um, that's when my game is going to start coming all together. And as a follow up to that, you're not just making assists, but you're pretty creative in creating assists and getting your teammates the ball. Is that a little bit of New York in you? For sure, man. Um, growing up, you know, New York guards make you know the flashiest passes. You know, they try to add some type of uh, flair to, to to the assist, and you know, playing up in the playground. Um, I used to make no look passes every day, so it just kind of stood with me. Thanks so much, man. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next question to Michael. Hey Marquise, was there a connection to K-State that you had uh, before you transferred, or what uh, What brought that about? Um, yeah, it was definitely a connection with Shane Southwell because he's a New York native. Um, I've known him since I was a little kid. Um, the first, um, or to, the first time I actually saw Coach Shane was in a gym. Um, I was working out, and he was there. He was done working out, and now I never, I never even thought about him being my coach one day. But you know, just how relationships work, and how being a good person, you know, always matters. Um, Ten years later, I was, you know, at K State with him. So, yeah. 
So you're around. I'm sorry, he broke up. I can't really hear. Over so. What age was that? Michael, we might try that question again. I think it was breaking up. At least it was breaking up for me. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Where were you at when you met Shane Marquise? What age? Yes. Uh, ooh, that's a long time. I was probably like 10, 11 years old, around that age. And I just was a kid with passion who always wanted to stay in the gym and get better. So, you know, just being around older guys and being around, you know, um the the older generation of you know great players i seen what it took you know to be great or i seen what it took to you know be at that level and i just you know i just hunt for that feeling of one day just saying you know man i did a great job i made history i said um i did what i said i was going to do and you know I, I conquered that in what ways has the move met or exceeded your expectations? So, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. In what ways did the transfer meet or exceed your expectations to K-State? Um, it met my expectations, you know, being around a great coaching staff. I knew there was a great coaching staff who wanted to win, who had the passion to win. Um, you know, I, I knew we had a ton of great talent, you know, and Nigel Pack. Mark Smith and, you know, Ish. So uh, in those ways, I felt like it met it. But, you know, we didn't exceed anything yet. We we are not even, you know, 50% of what K-State men's basketball could be. Uh, we are still growing, still, you know, learning. You know, we have, thank God we have, you know, a ton of talent that that is young, like Nigel Pack, even on Bradford, Ishmael. So, you know, those guys, have an opportunity to play again next year and myself. So I just feel like um, it's, it's a process, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Can you put your finger on where has it fallen short in the uh, It was breaking up, I apologize. Can you that? That's all right. Can you put your finger on you guys have fallen short when you've gotten beat? Um, it's the, it's the lack of awareness, the lack of, you know, experience at this level and playing together. Um, that's really much it, it comes down to, you know, um, knowing how to win those games, knowing what we can do and tweak at those moments, you know, to finish out. We've been competing with the top teams, you know, for, for, for this whole season, but we just haven't figured out what we can do to, you know, get over that hump and win and just yet. And what's the one thing from Nigel Pack's work ethic that you mentioned earlier that you've tried to maybe embrace in your own game or that you really admire? Um, Nigel Pack is a quiet assassin, man. He doesn't, he doesn't talk much. You don't even really notice he's in a gym until, you know, you're looking around you're like, where's Nigel at? And he's right there. So, Nigel is, you know, a great teammate. He's quiet. He's he's a he's a professional. He gets his work done, and you know, he's in and out, man. And I love playing with a guy like that because I'm it, we 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 match each other so perfectly. I'm the one that talks all day, and I talk to him because I know he don't want to talk. So, you know, I just try to you know pick his brain and see what we can do to you know win some more games. Hi, right, McKees. Thank you. Any other questions before I let Marquise go? Okay. Mark